Thanks for joining this webinar, focusing on using Extender to benefit all departments across your business. You're all in listen-only mode, so um, please put any questions that you have in the chat box. My name is Natalie, and today Anne and I will demonstrate scenarios around PO approvals and how all departments at Orca OZ benefit from a tailored implementation of Sage 300 using Extender Workflow Remote Action. First demo scenario, we'll look at purchase order approval workflow, a two-level example where the department manager and the financial controller approve using the remote action service. In our second scenario, we'll look at using PO requisition approved by the department manager and converting this requisition into a PO automatically. We'll review some steps to get started with the extender workflow in remote action. And since you may have noticed, we launched an updated website last week, we'll go through a few new features and tips about how to use them. You may have seen previous examples of how Orca Oz, the company supplying furniture and accessories to the hospitality industry, uses Sage 300 with ORCID modules. In this webinar, we will see how their tailored implementation of Sage 300 benefits all departments, primarily through consistency of processes, the emails they receive and the documents they generate and file across all departments. We're focusing on the procurement processes where further automation is being implemented by Orca Oz. All departments will have more visibility on their approvals. The finance department will enforce all their controls and audit requirements with more visibility on their financial commitments. Legal and contract management point of view, they are confident that their documents can be saved in Sage 300, visible in Sage 300 and sent to uh, their uh, vendors when, uh, when ready. There's also some flexibility in this consistency where field services or purchasing department can actually choose whether they use a requisition or purchase order and users have a choice as to how they're going to approve either in Sage 300 using the workflow console or icons on the screen or with the remote action service without having to log on to Sage 300. In our first scenario, we will look at the purchase order approval. Where Sue will enter actually two POs in Sage 300. One will be a small amount, less than her delegation of authority, less than $1,000. It will go straight to the financial controller to be approved when the workflow starts. For the larger POs, the department manager will first review the PO and accept it using the console in our example, but they could also use remote action. And then that gets routed to the financial controller who needs to approve all the POs. And in our example, they will approve using the remote action service. And to support this, we use a custom table in Extender that will store the user personal uh, spending limit and their manager. Then when the PO is approved, PO is taken off hold and uh, the requester can then view the PO, save a copy of the PDF in a folder that's uh, available for uh, document management link to display, and um, they can also email the vendor. So on this, I'm going to hand over to Anne to do the demonstration. So for this first scenario, I'm logged in as Sue, and I'm going to enter two POs and show you the workflows that get created off those uh, POs. But just before I do, I'm going to show you the custom table that we have built in order to store the user's manager and the, their delegated authority. So when Anne enters a PO, uh, if the PO is more than $2,000, it will be sent to Steve for approval first, and then after Steve approves, we'll go to the financial controller. Um, and uh, similarly, when David enters a PO, if it's less than $1,000, it'll go straight to the financial controller for approval. Um, otherwise, it will go first to Natalie and then to the financial controller. So I'm working as Sue. If my PO is less than $1,000, it'll go to um, Steve, who's the financial controller in this particular scenario. And uh, if it's uh, more than $1,000, it'll first go to Anne. And then only if Anne approves, will it go to Steve for final approval. So logged in as Sue, 
I'm going to go and create two POs. And the first PO is going to be a small PO for stationary. And won't worry too much about the item that I'm entering. And I'll go ahead and um, just enter a small quantity. So this PO will be uh, less than my delegated authority or Sue's delegated authority, which is $1,000. So as soon as the PO is inserted, the workflow kicks in and uh, creates the workflow, which in this case, because it's less than $1,000, it sends an email and web form to the financial controller, who is Steve, um, uh, to approve this. It also puts the purchase order on hold. And we see that here, yeah, that the purchase order is now on hold. Um, and the next one I'm going to do is going to be for more. So assuming that the router was uh, damaged during the recent thunderstorms we've had. And this PO is over over four thousand dollars, so um, clearly over my Sue's delegated authority. And the first level of approval will be done by Anne, and then if approved, it will then go through to Steve. Again, this PO has been put on hold until um, until it has been approved. And this on hold flag is monitored by the workflow. So if as Sue or anyone tried to take it off hold while there's still a workflow instance running, they would uh, get a message saying they can't do that, it needs to be approved through the workflow and uh, it would remain on hold. And on the screen itself, you can actually see if you configure the icons accordingly. You can configure to see that a workflow is in progress on this particular purchase order. Um, and the next step is approval by manager or reject. It's a green arrow, so Sue knows it's not for her. To, she can't go ahead and approve or reject, but she does know what, what the status of this particular record is. And similarly, Sue can, because she's been given access, Sue can view the workflow console. Uh, she, there's nothing assigned to her, so she can't be approving or rejecting here because she hasn't got any current workflow instances but she's allowed to view all and she can see that there's a, um, the, the current PO that we've just created is this PO 86, um, which is for greater than a thousand dollars. So it's been assigned, uh, as assigned to Anne first, and then when Anne approves, we'll go to Steve. And the first PO we entered is um, $200 uh, to less than $1,000. So it's gone straight through to Steve. And in the workflow, we've used these these status to give you a visual clue as to you know where it is in the workflow. So here, manager approval is required, and for this one, manager approval is not required. So I'm just going to uh, log in now as Anne. And I'm going to hit send and receive on my emails. And while that's uh, while that's doing that, um, so logging in as Anne, Anne can go to the workflow console, and when viewing records, where, uh, workflows which are assigned to me or a group I'm in, Anne sees this purchase order number 86 waiting for her to to approve. You can drill down to have a look at that purchase order. And on the purchase order cons uh, purchase order as well, and sees the same icons, but this time instead of a green arrow saying that the workflow is in progress, and sees a single person because the next step is assigned to her. If 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 I saw three people, then I'd know it's assigned to me or a group I'm in. Just with one person, it's assigned to me exclusively, and I could progress from here or I could progress from the uh, workflow itself by clicking approve here. Or if I, if I wasn't in the office, I would uh, be able to see in my emails, I've got the email relating to this particular purchase order. So PO86 at $4,600. 
and it's waiting for manager approval required. Um, it needs both manager and controller approval. So you can include the variables from your workflow or any variable from the purchase order into your into your um, uh, your email template uh, to give as much information as you can in the email template. And because I configured this particular workflow to use remote action service as well, I could actually approve by clicking on this link here, which would go straight to the website and I could approve there. And I would do that typically if I was not in the office um, and I just wanted to approve uh, before getting back into the office. You can also build into your workflow templates links back to the Sage 300 screens. And in this case, we've included a link back to the workflow console. So when I click on the workflow console, it takes me into the console with, um, you know, logged in as Anne, and we see, uh, you know, see what we, the same scenario as when I first opened up and showed you the workflow console. So Anne's happy with this particular PO. So it's going to go ahead and approve it. And the workflow has been configured to ask for a comment. And when the workflow is um, approved, this particular first level approval in this uh, workflow, the workflow is then assigned to Steve as a financial controller to uh, do the final approval. So from Anne's point of view, drops off her her console. So if I was only looking at what was assigned to me or a group I'm in, that has been dropped off. But because I've got permission to view all as well, I see all the records and I can see now that it has been approved and assigned to Steve. And if I look at um, the values, I can see my quote is, is there and that would be available for, for um, the email template at all. It's available in the history to be looked at at a later stage. So I'm just going to um, click send and receive here because that second approval would have sent Steve an email to approve that second PO. But the first PO that Sue created, the small one, is the small one has also sent through a PO. Um, a, a, a email to Steve to approve that one. So I'm Steve looking at my emails now. I'm not in the office. I don't have Sage 300 uh, available to me. Uh, so what I can do is um, approve straight away by clicking on this link. So I'm looking at the small PO 274. When I click on this link here, it takes me to the website um, and I can see the similar information, so the, what the contents of this form is formatted in a similar way to your email templates. You can include the variables from the purchase order in this case and from the workflow instance uh, in this particular, uh, on the particular form. And you can go ahead and prompt for um, a prompt for information, uh, you can have a mandatory comment and then we can approve or reject. So Steve approves this PO for 274 and looks at his emails and also sees this uh, approval which has been, you know, been through the, the first level. It needs both uh, manager and controller approval. The manager has approved. Uh, I could have included Anne's comment in here, but I haven't done that. Um, and again, can click on this link and then go ahead and approve or reject uh, the, the router PO as well. So let's say this is okay too. And approves that. So the remote action service is not um, pushing information into Sage 300. It is just, uh, you know, we're going from Sage 300 out to this to this website. So we don't need to open any firewalls or anything like that uh, from the, on on your application server. So now I'm going to log in as Sue. And I'm going to uh, run the action, the remote action polar. 
So this is normally this is an extender script which is normally scheduled by process scheduler, which you do every you know 15 minutes or half hour or hour depending how quickly you want this pull. So it goes it's originated from within Sage uh, 300 and it goes out to the website and pulls down any approvals or rejections that have been done since it was last run. And based on the workflow template, so you're controlling it within Sage 300, what the next step is. So if it's an approval, it'll go through and take the PO off hold. If it's a rejection, it'll do whatever you've built into your reject steps. Uh, you know, let Susan know that uh, PO has been rejected, needs to change the amount or, or whatever needs to be done. And I'm also just going to go back into my emails, which I shouldn't have closed, but um, it should uh, just to... Uh, get my emails and as Sue she would have got a email telling her that her POs have been approved and taken off hold so the first one is uh, the small one uh, for that Steve just approved straight away and the second one is the one that um, that both Nat uh, Anne and uh, Steve approved and included um, Steve's final uh, comment in the email. So Sue now knows that those uh, POs have taken off hold. We could have included a link uh, back to the PO here, uh, which we didn't, but we'll show you that as part of the, the next um, workflow example we're going to do. Um, so Sue, if she was to go to the workflow console, and although she wouldn't be doing this to approve, she, when she's viewing all, she can see um, you know, that the POs 85 and 86 are no longer there. She could also go to the workflow history and see the history that's happened. But because she's received her email, she knows that the POs have been taken off hold. So she's able to go back to the POs and she sees that it's been taken off hold and she's now able to save the PDF uh, of the email in document management links folder um, or save the PDF and email it through to the vendor. So I'll just go ahead and save the PDF. So what that's doing is using a custom configured form for POs and saving it in a custom configured uh, directory that document management link can use. So when we uh, refresh our document management link box, we see PO86, and I could have clicked this button, which would have done the same thing. It would have created, created the PO in um, Vendor 1400's configured directory and emailed it to Vendor 1400 based on uh, you know, a configured email template for the contents of the body of the email, as well as attaching the PDF um, to it. So that's what I had planned to show you as part of the PO approval with two levels of um, approval and using a custom table to get the manager and the amount below which uh, only one level is, is required. So I'm going to hand back to Natalie uh, and she's going to uh, continue. Thanks, Anne. Okay, so in this... Um in this example, we have focused on purchase order approval using remote action service. And because it's our newest uh, offering and was launched in a couple of months ago, we'll just go through uh, briefly how, how it works in this particular scenario. So when Sue enters the purchase order, the workflow starts. And the way we've configured it is in this example is um, that the manager will approve in Sage 300. So that is all happening in Sage 300, um, starting the workflow and approving on the workflow console and the icons that we've seen. And that um, either when Sue first enters a small PO or when the manager approves the, the larger POs, that builds the form that is sent to the financial controller. So that form is a one-time uh, link that is in the email that can be used um, by the financial controller to, uh, to approve. When they, um, and that sits outside of the firewall without uh, connecting to, to Sage 300. When the financial controller then approves the PO on the remote action form, that all is saved on that, um, on that website. 
And the final step to bring this back into SAGE 300 is for SAGE 300 to actually pull those completed forms from, from the website using an extender script generally scheduled with Process Scheduler so that this process is actually automated and transparent to, to the users. And that then um, progresses the workflow or in the example we've looked at, it actually approved and completed the workflow, which means taking it off hold and then releasing to, to the vendor. So the amount that gets automated in that um, final approval step or in the reject step, what happens there is configured in your workflow uh, template. So remote action service really builds on the flexibility of the extender workflow process. So who approves and how many approvers happen for a particular uh, purchase order in our example can be configured uh, in the workflow template and we've looked at how to do this using an extender custom table. So that uh, custom table and the script to read the workflow action script to read the data from the custom table will be made available on our website in the next uh, couple of days. If you have a very simple uh, approval process, you can use that as a workflow parameter or based on an optional field on, on the PO. Our example here with that custom table was based on the amount in the user, but you could link it to other fields like the uh, location on the purchase order header or combination of a user and a location. So again, a lot of flexibility in how you would uh, you can configure that. The approvers also have um, a choice. They can use the workflow console in Sage 300, or they can use configured screen icons so they can see the detail and uh, act from the Sage 300 screen. Or if they don't use Sage 300 or, or don't have access to Sage 300 at that particular point in time, they can use the remote action uh, service. So that enforces uh, consistent processes across all departments, but they can still be tailored to their exact uh, requirements and to their preferences. We've also seen how uh, we can use an extended script to save a copy of the PDF form and or to email it based on the vendor delivery method. And using that in conjunction with document management link to support your, uh, your paperless uh, processes. In our second scenario, we will look at uh, PO requisition. So still around your procurement process, but using another alternative in Sage 300 with requisition. So in this example, David will enter a PO requisition, which starts the workflow. And the PO requisition is assigned to uh, his department manager. We will use again our custom table to find out who the department manager is. And um, this is a simple example where the manager will use the workflow console to uh, to approve and um, when they approve the PO is automatically created from the requisition and the starter and the purchasing department the financial controller whoever needs that information will then receive an email smart link including the PO number that was created from that requisition and um, then that can, uh, you can then use that to save your uh, your PDF. And optionally, we will see in our example that the uh, PO approval workflow will also start. So you could split that process. The department uses a requisition. When the requisition is approved, that starts a PO. And that creates a PO, which starts the PO approval uh, workflow, possibly with another department or with financial um, the financial controller department. And uh, at the end of that scenario, we will have a closer look at the workflow template uh, with um, the different actions, including the new custom actions. And uh, we'll also show you the optional fields on the PO um, requisition as a reminder that you can now, um, and again, that was in the recent product update of Extender, you can include an action in the, in the workflow without using a custom action to do um, to to set optional fields or to read optional fields. So on that, I will hand back to Anne for the demonstration. Thanks, Natalie. So this time I am logged into Sage 300 as David to enter my purchase requisition. Just but just before we do, we'll have a quick look at the custom table and see who is David's manager 
so we can so we know who the um, workflow is going to be assigned to. So David has a delegated authority of $1,000, which is not used in requisitions. It's only used on purchase orders. And But he, David's manager is Natalie. He might be surprised to hear that. Um, but David's manager is Natalie, and Natalie is going to be the one who approves his uh, requisitions. So I'm going to the requisition entry, uh, logged in as David, and create my requisition for some um, new work uh, images for the website. As you know, we've just revamped the website, and we have lots of new images. And if you, a little plug, if you want to get a quote and an image on, on our website, happy to do that. Send us a great quote and, um, and we'll do that. So David enters his, um, his PO, uh, his requisition, sorry. And uh, when he goes ahead and posts it in the same way as with our purchase order uh, workflow that we've just seen, the workflow starts automatically and it goes to the custom table to find out who the manager is and immediately puts the requisition on hold until such time as it is approved through the workflow. And this on hold flag is, uh, is uh, um, forget that I've got some POs in a different number range. So this requisition is the on hold flag is protected by the workflow. So if David was to take it off, hold or attempt to take it off hold, uh, he would not be able to do so and nobody can until such time as it's approved through the workflow console or one of the email links uh, where you can approve by, approve or reject. So when David goes to the workflow console, he doesn't see anything because nothing's assigned to him, but he has been given permission to view all. So he sees his purchase requisition sitting there sees the requisition number, the description, a, a brief summary of the requisition, and he can see the status is waiting for the approval of the manager, and the next step is uh, wait. And in that wait step, um, Natalie can either approve or reject. So Natalie would receive email notification of that um, with a link back to uh, Sage 300. So just logging in as Natalie and send and receive on my emails. So there's Natalie's uh, email. And in the same way as with our purchase orders, we can now include fields from the purchase requisition uh, to give as much information as possible. And um, either because Natalie's in Sage 300 and can just go to the Workflow Console or we've built in the, the link through to the Workflow Console, she can open up the Workflow Console and can see the same record. David um, entered Natalie. It's waiting for Natalie to approve or reject. And from here, she can drill down into the purchase requisition if she needs to see uh, the accounts that have been used or the, any details on the accounts that have been used, and including the optional fields that we have on the that we've put on the purchase requisition. And these uh, optional fields are updated by the workflow uh, through a workflow action, which I'll which I'll show you. So let's say uh, Natalie's happy with this requisition, so she's going to go ahead and approve. Again, it's prompting for a comment. And when the purchase order, when the purchase requisition is approved, the approval step, what it what it's been configured to do, is to automatically create a PO from the requisition. So in the background, a PO is being created from this uh, requisition number 15. And because we had our workflow already running, that whenever a PO is created, a workflow is started, you can see that requisition 15 was, um, was approved. And we, when the requisition uh, was converted into a purchase order, the purchase order number was captured and put back on the description of the requisition. It's got no next step. 
Um, and by design, we left it on the workflow console so we could show this. Uh, so in the history of the requisition, you can see exactly which PO got created, although this is no longer an active uh, workflow instance. And um, then because the we've got a workflow running on PO as well, it automatically, when the PO87 was automatically created, it went to the user department table and saw that, um, you know, as user Natalie, because Natalie is the one who created the PO, as user Natalie, it went to the PO table, uh, the they delegated authority table to see who's, who's Natalie's manager and if it was be below or above her, her delegated authority, it would send first to the manager, which I know I'm the manager, so it's been sent to Anne, and um, here's the details, and it is an active a workflow instance waiting for Anne or, uh, to approve or reject uh, that particular one. If we drill into the uh, requisition, I've got the requisition line highlighted here, and if we drill down into the requisition, we see that it has uh, been converted into a PO, but the optional fields, I'm surprised, uh, the optional fields should have been set to the requisition um, has been uh, created of this one. Um, and uh, we can drill into the PO. And optional fields. And, and the PO uh, workflow has set the optional fields on the PO to uh, it's currently waiting for manager approval and the the note of the last step that was taken in, in the workflow approval. So you can update optional fields, which is useful if you're using optional fields or, or wanting to include the status or some notes from the workflow in the optional fields for reporting purposes without people necessarily going into the history of the workflow instances and trying to find the last one to find the current status. So if you need to, you can just update the workflow with the same, um, same information. So, and now we'd carry on as normal. We should log in as Anne and approve that, and then it'll be get sent through, uh, through to Steve's. So when, but from the, from the fact that the PO requisition was um, approved, David would have received an email. So let's just send and receive here. So in David's email, he gets an email saying that the requisition has been approved and he's got, uh, he knows the PO number, it's been put in the subject and he's been given a link to link back to the PO if he wants to. Um, and assuming he's logged into Sage 300, um, if he isn't, it'll prompt him to log in and it opens up the PO screen with the PO that's now being created off his uh, requisition. So let me just close a few of these screens. So at all times when uh, steps are taken in in workflows, you end up with a, um, for every workflow instance, you end up with a single record in this workflow summary table. And, um, but when you look at the detail of that, you can go in to see who did what when. So if I look at the purchase order that Sue created that required the two level approval, so that was uh, PO number 86, and go into the detail log, you can see Susan first started it and it went to the wait for the manager and Anne was the manager and it waited for that. And when approved, it was sent through to Steve as the controller and he, uh, he approved it. And in your workflow, you can update your um, the status and uh, uh, with this is like a you know a notification which shows on the workflow console, but also gets captured in the approve in the um, work workflow history. So you can track through the statuses that your workflow has gone through. And on any one level, you can click into the values 
and then it's uh, recording the values at that point in time. And if you remember correctly, when Anne approved, she said this is as per quote, and we get the same, uh, you know, Steve's approval was uh, captured as well. So you have the workflow instance that you can always access, and you can also access the workflow instance if you configure the workflow icons. Um, so on the purchase order itself, it will always show you the active one or the currently um, or the history of the last one. So you can see the arrow is gray, meaning there has been a workflow instance. It's not green, so it's no longer active. It's not a person or people. It's no longer waiting for somebody to do something. But you can log into the last, you can view the log of the last instance for this workflow uh, from that screen as well. Sorry, it seems to be opening in the background. So we've got the approvals um, and we can look at the detail log. It was started by Susan and we're back into the same inquiry screen that we saw earlier. And just to have a quick look at the workflow templates. So this uh, module will be loaded to our website in the next couple of days and it, you'll be receive notification when, it, when, it, when it's been loaded. Uh, there's two workflow templates uh, associated with this module. The PO requisition and the purchase order. Um, they're very similar except the purchase order has two levels and the PO requisition only has one level. When a workflow template is first started, normally the entry step is executed. And in this entry step, it's got a number of uh, configure uh, actions which really set the controller, who's going to be the controller approver. Um, it uh, runs this workflow set value from custom table. So this is the new custom action that we will be uh, releasing as part of this module, which goes to our custom table to get, in this case, just the manager, but you can also get that delegated authority as well. And uh, to call it, you just call the, the, the script name, you tell it what the table name is, you tell it who the user is, and you tell it which variables you want to, uh, uh, you know, which uh, field are you wanting to read from the custom table and which variables you want to set in the workflow. So a uh, very powerful um, as action here uh, that you can just read a value from any custom table and set it into your workflow. Then we set the drill down, um, set the value, uh, uh, that, there we set the value of the manager, set the drill down, um, and then we go to step start order. If it's a new uh, requisition, it goes to start the order. Um, if it's an update, like somebody's tried to change the on hold flag or something, it will just keep the workflow, keep the workflow instance going. But in the start new order, it's setting the status again. Um, so that was our status on the right hand side of the console. It's showing the message that the requisition has been um, put on hold. It puts the requisition on hold and it sets these optional fields. So in these steps, it sets the optional field a value to a requisition a requires manager approval. Not quite sure why we didn't see that. Um, and it sets the optional field status to waiting. So just I'll double check that before we release this particular uh, module. It assigns the user, the, so the workflow becomes assigned to the manager, which it uh, read from our optional table, and then it sends that email. So in sending the email, you just specify the email template name, and I'll show you this email template, uh, that what variables you can include in the email template. And the other step to show you is the approval step, which um, adds a parameter and then asks for the parameter. So that was the approval comment coming in from the, uh, from the form uh, that was popped up by the workflow console. Uh, it sets the optional fields. And then it runs this new custom action, which is called create PO from PO requisition. I shouldn't call it custom action. It will be released as part of core extender. So in configurator, you'll be able to convert requisitions to purchase orders. Um, you won't need to write a custom action uh, for that. 
and then goes ahead and um, you know sends an email and shows the user a message saying it's been taken off hold. And to have a quick look at the workflow templates. Uh, your workflow templates can be either HTML or plain text, depending um, if you want to do some formatting in the templates. And you can see we've included the company name, the peer requisition, uh, the extended value of the peer requisition, the status, and um, you know this is the link back to the workflow console. All that we saw in the email uh, that was sent through to uh, Natalie uh, when the requisition was created. And if we go back to our email, we see an example of that in Natalie's uh, box, which is this one, which is uh, which is exactly uh, this email that you're seeing here. So I think I've gone through all the things that I was supposed to show you. Unless Natalie corrects me, I'll hand back to Natalie. Thank you, Anne. So in this PO requisition scenario, we've seen that the workflow can be used to expand on the Sage 300 out-of-the-box approval options for uh, for PO requisition. So you can use the extender workflow with the uh, Sage option to approve requisition, turn on or turn off, depending on what your uh, what your process is. And um, we've looked at a relatively simple scenario where uh, it goes straight to the department manager but you could uh, also use all the configure workflow configuration options that we explored in the first scenario with multi-level approvals an approval based on an amount or on the location or on some other um, other configuration that's uh, that's relevant We've, um, in the example we looked at, we did not look at remote action service for the peer requisition, but you can configure remote action service to approve without logging on to Sage 300. And that would really just require a subscription to the service and replacing the send email um, action that we've looked at just now with a uh, send remote action uh, action in the in the workflow template so it's a pretty uh, simple change to uh, to do so and that would be particularly relevant if your department managers generally don't log on to sage we have configured our workflow template to create a peer automatically but again that is an option um, that you can uh, turn on and off or do it for only certain types of requisition or certain uh, departments. So all this uh, flexibility is available to you in configuring your workflow templates. But you still have a consistent process. So we've looked at examples in uh, PO for procurement, but if you were using um, if you're using, um, if you need workflow on other types of records, you would have a similar configuration, similar processes. And this, of course, facilitates collaboration within the department since we can allocate a task between um, a um, between users in the department, allocate it across to other departments, and also facilitate collaboration with external stakeholders as we can uh, email automatically our um, our vendors. So we've um, focusing on extender in particular extender workflow and and remote action but we've looked at all these uh, these five modules in in this scenario which help all departments have visibility on their approvals and their processes the um, finance department can enforce all their controls and audit requirements uh, the legal department and HR and contract management can ensure that the processes are adhered to and they make it easy for staff to adhere to the process. And um, the documents are saved in Sage 300 and instead of having a room full of, uh, of papers in the office that uh, people don't go to anymore, they now have um, a little drive which can be, um, you know, saved away somewhere in, in the cloud. That includes all the documents that people need access to in, in Sage 300. They have consistent and flexible processes. I think we've mentioned that a few times. 
And a uh, reminder that um, we've demonstrated this with purchase orders, but it will work with all um, Sage 300 core modules, your uh, master files, your batches, and your transaction headers. It also works with third-party modules that other departments may be using, such as Technisoft Service Manager for your field services, or just simply manufacturing for your manufacturing department. Uh, if you're using norming fixed assets to track our assets in the finance department, we can still have an approval process around the, um, the, the new fixed assets or around depreciation. Or if they use RMA in the customer service, this will also um, this can also be configured and apply. Remote action service, you may have seen that in some prior webinars, but uh, probably a little bit of repetition doesn't hurt since it is a new service. And a reminder that you can um, request your NFR tokens. So remote action service lets you approve Sage 300 uh, workflow records or extended workflow records without logging into Sage 300. It's easy to use. You've seen that you receive a one-time link in an email, click on the email and follow uh, choose one of the configured action in, in the email. It is easy to install. You just need to install and activate Extender. You don't need to open any firewall ports on the, on your Sage 300 server or configure IIS. It is just um, running the outside of your firewall. It's uh, secure as it is built on the Django framework and hosted on Amazon Web Services. And it builds on Extender's ability to run Python scripts. The whole of the remote action service is um, developed using, uh, using Python. Is configurable like the rest of the of Extender workflow. You can tailor your emails and, and your forms as um, we've in the same way that uh, we've looked at tailoring a message template just now. And like the rest of the workflow, it applies to master files, transactions, and um, batches, both core modules and SDK developed third party modules. The uh, details on the remote action service are available through um, your usual ORCID distributor. It works with both extender configurator and developer needs process scheduler level one and above to automate retrieving the completed uh, remote forms into Sage 300. And um, the users who um, need access to the console and to the remote action service uh, need to be licensed to be workflow users, which um, replaces the old uh, ORCID users for the purpose of the workflow. And there's a slightly different pricing, which is available from uh, from Rob Lavery and um, the other distributors. But just to mention that the pricing structure is based on the number of requests that you have per month based on these tiers. And as a Sage 300 uh, partner supporting ORCID products, you can um, you have access to um, an NFR token. So contact us to get your NFR code for the remote action um, service. And for more information on uh, Extender Workflow, Remote Action Service, and obviously the rest of our um, product offering, you can um, have a look at uh, our website. And talking about our website, you may have noticed when you registered for this um, webinar that uh, we did revamp the website in the last um, few months. So first thing I'll do is obviously thanks David, our marketing manager, for managing this update. And um, thanks to all our partners and clients for your ongoing contributions in terms of feedback and quotes. We're always looking for new ways to promote, promote the solutions that you develop for your clients in Sage 300. So if you have any, anything you want to share with us, um, please, um, please do so. And um, we have added, um, you know, obviously a revamp in the look and feel, but also a few new features. So we just want to um, take a few minutes before answering questions to uh, to show you a few um, things on um, on the website. So um, we haven't changed our colors, but we've uh, changed a little bit the menu structure to um, should make it easier for you to find the information when you looking at the price list and wondering, you know, what this uh, product does or doesn't do. So you can go um, here straight to, um, let's say, Extender, since it was the main module that we focused on um, today. 
and uh, you have some general information about it, uh, some, uh, we hope, clear description as to what each edition does and when you need one versus the other. So if we look at um, you know, Extender uh, Developer, you can see um, we've got quotes and illustrations. So yeah, if, you're, um, if you're a game, uh, please uh, you know, contact us. We'd love to have real, um, real people on, uh, on our website. Anyway, I'll let you um, browse at your own leisure the various uh, products and uh, solutions that, um, that, that we offer for, for Sage 300. The case studies and newsletters and events that you're used to are still there. And obviously, uh, most of you are used to logging in to, uh, to our website. Again, that's still at the top there to access our um, various resources. Resources are still there. They're just ordered a little bit, a um, little bit differently. And also, when you first log on, have access to some high-level uh, product news release notes. The detail is still available on the updates tab in the options of all our modules. Um, but here you'll have you know, some important product uh, releases, like a new bin tracking update, or obviously when we release version 2021 or the EFT web screens that will be. Um, published here. Our extended sample scripts uh, are, um, are here and uh, again we will upload to, um, to this section the modules, the module that we've looked at today including all the PO uh, requisition and PO approval workflow including the new, um, the new custom actions and they'll probably be here under both workflow and uh, purchase orders. You also have access here to the remote action module that you would need to install to get going with remote action. Uh, two new things, a uh, new piece of functionality on the website. One is on the resources. You now have access to the online help. We're following in Sage's uh, path to release all our F1 help uh, online and not just as part of installing the module. We have so far released uh, Extender, including Remote Action Service and Process Scheduler, and we will release the help for the other modules um, with the release of 2021 in the next uh, couple of months. And when you go there, it takes you to the online help, which has links to some of the key uh, training videos, as well as typical uh, steps to get started and the menu that you would probably be familiar from the F1 help that you can access from, um, from the screens. So here, this is the key steps to get started with the remote action service, which obviously won't look at today, but just wanted to point you into that direction. Um, the, Sorry, uh, Sorry to interrupt, while you're there, would you mind just showing, it answers one of the questions, would you mind just showing where the workflow examples are, the ones that we've released so far? Um, uh, here in Extender, you've got the Extender uh, workflow tutorials. So the list is there and um, we haven't released the PO example yet, but you will have uh, the remote action tutorial, which uh, is also in the video from a cup from last month or the month before, and other examples around um, so retail OE orders and the structure for OE orders is very similar to the structure for for PO, where we put the OE order on hold. So most of the tutorials have got this similar structure, a little bit of a summary. Uh, the um, import uh, workflow template that you can import is available here, as well as the key steps to, to configure and then uh, detail uh, about, you know, about the steps, uh, etc. If there are some prerequisites on optional fields that need to be set up, we try and highlight that in there. Um, and uh, variations and in this example you need to attach it to your order view so we um, show you how to do that in there so that's where they're available so we will uh, publish one for for PO, um, PO as well uh, so was that um, I haven't looked at the questions yet so hopefully no, that now you're going to show us the search yes and then we'll look at the questions yeah so, 
yeah, one of the new um, features of the of the website is the ability to search across the site. So this uh, obviously you can search for whatever whatever you want within within the website because we've looked at extender and approval. I'm just going to search on approval in this um, in this example. So it's going through all the different types of contents we have on that website. So the solutions, ways of grouping our products, uh, some blog articles, uh, case studies, um, etc. So depending on what you what you want to do, you can then uh, click and have a read about the workflow solution. Or if you just want some training videos, or some demonstration videos, you can select videos and see all the videos that relate to um, to approval. Or you might want to look for sample scripts that relate to approvals and they will also show up in here. And from here, I can click and go and find it. So we hope that this will make, um, you know, things that uh, it make it easier for you to find the information that, that you're after. Uh, if you can't find it or if you find it and still have further questions, then of course, um, contact us as you're used to on support at orchid.systems. Um, I think uh, because we're now um, in the North American time zone, we'll just, uh, for example, look at payroll related um, videos. So these would be the key demonstration and, and training videos relating to EFT for payroll, including some brief quick tip videos on how to email uh, payslip and, uh, and T4. And these are quite a common uh, you know, support questions that we get. How do I, what what are the steps to get started with emailing the payslip? So we obviously uh, love to answer your support emails, but if it's the middle of the night for us uh, and you can find the answer yourself on the website, that's probably easier for uh, for everyone. Uh, and you can also search, for example, for Info Explorer Cubes. And you'll see that we've got a couple of uh, Info Explorer Cubes relating to, um, to payroll. So these are the main things we wanted to show you on um, on on the website. And um, yeah, again, we'd love some feedback, whatever it is, whether you find what you're looking for or not, because uh, we're always endeavoring to uh, to keep improving it. So now we will um, have a look at questions. Give Can you, you some time. Again, Natalie, because there's a couple of questions here which I can answer and show the show the answer sure. to. Do we have an option of choosing which PO form gets used when we send it through to the uh, through to the vendor? So I think what your question there is is referring to this button that we have at the bottom of the screen um, to PDF save a PDF. Um, let's get one that's active. Uh, to save the PDF or save the PDF and email? And do we have a choice which form gets created here? And yes, we do. Uh, in Extender, there's a custom table. This module is the PO, uh, um, you know, create PDF and send to, to the vendor, which is on the website, uh, search for it. There is a sample module that's on the website uh, in the example scripts, filter by PO or search for it. Um, and it comes part of, it has a custom table called the PR, the purchase order UI demo. And what you do is you configure the directory where you want to store the, um, the PDF. And it's like, it's like, it is the same as the document management link one. And it's able to substitute, uh, the value with the current vendor that it's on. Um, so that's how the script has been written. Um, you say which purchase order report you're using. So that's the uh, report group. Um, so we're using POPOR4 in this case, but you could change that for whatever crystal report name that you want to do. And this is the email message that is used in sending through to the vendor. So you can control what's sent there as well. And this is an admin email address um, if there's something wrong with the, like it's supposed to email the vendor and there's no vendor email address, it will uh, email this admin address so you know that the email has not gone. Um, but that script, uh, which is, um, you know, uh, which amends the PO screen and adds these two buttons is, oh, click that one again. 
you know, is a, a script that gets imported, applied to the PO screen, and you can edit that P, that script and change it to work the way that you want. Um, if if what we've done is does not really cover off exactly what you want to do. So I hope that answers that question. And then uh, another question is. Uh, can we have a button to submit the documents for for approval as opposed to or to avoid the situation where you might inadvertently have inserted a document and not yet finished and it, and the workflow gets uh, triggered so the workflow templates that I showed you were all automatic templates on inserting the purchase requisition or inserting the purchase order but um, we do also have the ability to specify on your workflow template that it is a manual, uh, it gets started manually. So in this particular database, I think I have a manual workflow around putting the customer on hold if they're over their credit limit or out of terms. So in this case, you say the uh, can, can start manually, you say yes. So this will never automatically uh, fire off. You need to start this workflow manually, either because you've written a script which gets scheduled every night, which recognizes that the person's now out of terms and it starts the workflow, or you can configure the workflow. Um, and I'm not sure if I have it configured in this in this database. Um, you, I think it's oh, on, maybe the on the customer inquiry inquiry. screen. Yeah. On the customer inquiry, we've configured the workflow icon um, to to not just show you the instances, but start the workflow. So if you wanted to enter your purchase order and then only when you've done all your amendments, when you're happy, then you go start the PO workflow, you would configure an icon on the PO screen and make the PO workflow a manually start can be started manually, um, and that's all that you do. Now to to configure this, it's done through through the tray icon in the same way as you do notes and document management link. And so on the um, AR customer inquiry screen, I think it's this one. You. You, in, you so you're configuring now not to show notes or or a network folders or SharePoint. You're configuring to do an extender workflow, and in this case, you're specifying. Um, let me just. Uh, I lost that. Uh, you're specifying extender workflow based on the customer number, and that's the workflow. It's um, must start. And that's the step it must run, and it's passing in two uh, two parameters: who 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 are the approver groups and the you know for first and second level approval. So the, yes, you can have manually started workflows, and you can have a uh, use the tray icon to configure a button up the top there, or you could have had it as your own big button at the bottom, just like I've got save email. You could start it through there through a custom script, or you could start it through a timed uh, event like like process scheduler running a script every night to see if they're now on overdue and um, and start a workflow to put them on hold because they're overdue. Um, and the, fi the final question I see is uh, uh, resellers need lots more training so they know how to work with these workflow templates. So yes, and I think the starting point is those um, six released examples at the moment. And along with those, uh, there's a couple of training videos on creating their templates and working with these uh, samples. Um, but if you're having questions or need any more than that, uh, feel free to reach out to us and we can see what we can um, set up for you. Uh, to to run through this and remember also Rob and his team are also very happy to work with you in helping you do these workflow templates and writing any custom scripts um, as you need them to so that's another avenue that you can uh, that you can explore as well well on that we might just uh, show you maybe two more things on um, I think to answer your question or what Anne was demonstrating now that uh, purchase order um, button to create a PDF and email the, the vendor 
it's uh, a slight variation of this uh, sample script that is available in the resources uh, extended scripts area. So if you select purchase order, you have this one, which is a module to save the PDF and it's got a little, uh, instruction as to uh, how to configure the custom table to uh, to make this work. And um, we can also um, show you in uh, around extender in um, in general. Actually, let's have a look uh, here. We may have uh, attended our um, you know last uh, couple of uh, webinars on um, on extender, and you would have seen our two uh, two videos that actually demonstrate the kind of things you can do with Extender Configurator and Extender Developer. So I know some of you have already seen that, but if you haven't seen that yet, um, this is a really good starting point to um, to see more concretely what uh, Extender, in this case, we have this video on Extender Developer in action, and there's a very similar one on Extender Configurator in action. So I would encourage you to, um, to look at those. And then um, you can um, go and look at some more detailed uh, training videos on um, Extender uh, in here as well. With um, we've got our Extender Configurator demo video here, and we've got a whole lot of uh, workflow training video as well uh, from um, from. A, a few months ago when we released our workflow, which are available here. So, and of course, as Anne mentioned, we're always uh, happy uh, to answer your questions and so is uh, Rob and, um, and, and his team. So, can't see any additional questions. We've run slightly over time, so um, apologies for that, but hopefully that was um, that was useful for you. Enjoy the rest of your day and um, get in touch when you have any other questions. And of course, we'll see you hopefully next month in our next month webinar. And before that, you will receive a link to this, um, the recording of this webinar, as well as um, our uh, monthly newsletter is going to be um, sent later today or tomorrow. You. So thanks, thanks very much for your time and your feedback and uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Bye. Bye.